this Valentine's episode of Wines to Find, your hosts are joined by their husbands as we sample a couple bourbon barrel aged wines. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Sandy. We are two sisters tasting and reviewing wines with the goal of taking the WTF out of Wines to, to Find. find. Welcome to episode 5 of Wines to Find. On today's episode, we'll be tasting four wines. A St. Hilaire Blanquette de Limo, year 2017. A 2015 Francis Ford Coppola Director's Cut Zinfandel. A 2017 Exodus Red Blend. A 2017 Cooper and Thief Red Blend. Our guests today are our husbands. This is our Valentine's Day episode. John and I exchange Valentine's bottles of wine each year. That's our Valentine gift for each other. So we thought we'd translate that into an episode of Wines to Find. So our guys have each brought us a bottle of wine, and we've brought them a bottle of wine. So yes, you heard that right. Four bottles of wine will be tasted, maybe not fully consumed, this evening. So my husband is John, and Sandy's husband is Scott. As we're tasting our wines, they'll be sharing with you their wine stories. They're also going to tell us why they purchased these particular bottles as gifts for us. And Sandy and I will in turn share why we've made our selection for them. And we hope a little bit of hilarity will ensue as the evening goes on. So without further ado, John, what bottle of wine did you bring for me? I brought the uh, the St. Hilaire It's a a French sparkling wine. It's technically not a champagne. It's a Blanquette de Limoux, which apparently, from the research we've done, predates champagne by about 100 years. Oh, wow. The first sparkling wine produced in France. Yes. But not in the Champagne region. Correct. Correct, Correct. yeah. And in fact, then they must have started making champagne in champagne 100 years later. This is, uh, in in the research that we did, because I had to look it up, it is uh, it is fairly well rated. The this bottle is it comes in at an eighty seven, so it's not quite at that ninety point that we are at. And again, this is one of our special episodes, so we're not really going to be OCD about the point ratings for our special episodes. And we may personally love it. We may. I hope we do. So I'm excited to try it. Are you going to do the honors and pop sure. that bottle? Don't don't get me with the cork. That's all I'm worried about. Have you had this before? No. Do you guys typically enjoy sparkling wines? Yeah, well, so yeah, John, why did you purchase it for me? Oh, wait a minute. Let him concentrate. We don't want yeah, him to yeah. hit you. No. Woo! There it is. Just <laughs> shot somebody dying. Right there. <laughs> yep. That's what I was worried about. I went to the store looking for Prosecco. Didn't have anything in mind. And this was actually one of the uh, manager's recommendations. They have the little signs there at the uh, in front of the bottles. Had some interesting tasting notes on it. Uh, green apple was the one that uh, stood out to me because I know Michelle loves Granny Smith apples. Mm-hmm, I do. So uh, we'll and, see. And I do enjoy a sparkling wine, so I'm super excited to try it. Good, good choice. Good selection. Glass number one. I hear the bubbles. Glass number two is poured. Do you want to do the honors first and taste the first sip? Or so, wait, no, we should cheers. We should cheers it. I've got the third one poured. I'm getting ready to get the fourth. Okay. Cheers. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's. Cheers. Happy Valentine's. (laughs) Did we cheers it? Okay. Salut. It's fruity. Fruity. Nice, good little bubbles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can actually taste the apple. I can I can taste the apples. Maybe peach too. Do mm-hmm. you taste peach? It was peach and apricot were also the notes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Good. So well, I good could definitely job. A Thank plus you. on your tasting. Maybe vanilla too. Is vanilla in there or no? I think it might have a little bit of vanilla. We didn't actually. Well, I guess you taste what you taste notes. anyway. You took a picture Here's of what it. it said. The manager's- Aromatic flavors of peach, pear, and green apple. Exceptional value for a says true champagne, but, but it's, it's not truly yeah. a champagne. We have to it's taste. French. It's French, and it's tasty. It's very refreshing. It is. I really, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and I so 
I find that sparkling wine is uh, lighter. It's not heavy. It pretty much goes with anything. You can do a cocktail with it if you want. So I, I find that they're um, a go-to for me, which is probably why. You got it. For that's me. what I was thinking. I knew you dr- drink a lot of prosecco, so mm-hmm. that's why whenever I saw that, I was like, "Oh, John knows what Michelle it likes." Does. Do we want to do my wine story while we're enjoying this one? I think that's and a good And then we idea. can review it and then move on excellent. to the next one. Okay, excellent idea. I'm going to have to have more of this wine while we listen to your story. Okay, my wine story starts probably, I guess, about over 20 years ago. Worked with a guy who he. Uh, was just getting into wine and had a good friend of his who was very much into wine and had a wine cellar in his house so he was kind of our mentor Mm -hmm. and had the opportunity to taste a lot of uh, good wines and get some recommendations from that always good to have somebody mentor you and bring you in with some knowledge basis yeah basically has grown since then Michelle and I have always, um, as she has already told you, uh, early on, wine was always a fun part of our relationship, fun hobby, uh, something we enjoy to do together. Very good. Well, Scott, this is my husband, Scott. Oh, I don't even know how to introduce him. He, I am just so thankful he is here actually doing this podcast. He is the guy that you will not be able to find on any social media handles. So this is a stretch out of his comfort zone, but as his normal thing that he always does, he's always supportive. So I'm not surprised that he's here. So thank you, Scott, for participating. And you're welcome, Sandy. I'm glad to participate. And I am glad you invited me to come participate on this Valentine's Day. So what I bought Sandy was the Francis Ford Coppola Director's Cut Ziffendale. And the reason I chose the Ziffendale is because it's Sandy's favorite variety. And the reason I chose this particular Francis Ford Coppola was because on one of our trips to San Francisco, to Napa, we actually went to the Francis Ford Coppola um, Vineyard. So that's why I selected. And that's one of our favorites, so that's yeah. that's cool. I didn't know y'all had been to that particular vineyard, so that's cool. It was. It was, it was a lot of fun when we went, and this is actually a really nice wine We've had it before, so I'm hoping that this this is just as good, this as bottle well, is. Well, it's a 2015, so from our research, we know that that was a good year for reds, so yes. that, that's also a, a plus, so I'm certain it's going to be a good a good one. So thank okay. you, Scott. So, good so not quite as thorough as John on the research, <laughs> but uh, Well, still. that was personal research. Yeah, yeah research. That's, that's what, that was from from personal knowledge of what she likes. Do we want to open this? Yeah, let's go ahead and try it. And we have crackers here, so we might be cleansing our palate. I don't think we're going to need to roll into from the sparkling, but when we get to the other flavors, we might want to take Whose glass was this? That's me. Michelle. Mm -hmm. And Scott, while we're pouring, do you want to tell a little bit about your history with wine? Sure. So my wine story, I would say it probably, probably began after Sandy and I got married. Um, not much in the wines before then. And We've Sandy, been married a long time now. Yeah, <laughs> long time. So 20, 25 plus years. <laughs> I know it's more than that, but it's over 25. He's also being very generous about age right now, too, uh, maybe. <laughs> been a long time. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of when we started enjoying wine together. Probably one of our first... Um, I guess, informational trips was when we went to San Diego to visit some friends of ours and visited a vineyard in out, right outside of San Diego. And one of the things that I have found is I'm really not into white wines. A little too sweet for me. Um, never enjoyed them. So if I'm having wine, it's some type of variety or blend of red whether it's chicken or fish, which typically is a white wine. I lean more towards a Pinot Noir, 
um, or something lighter uh, for those type of meals. And then look towards a Cabernet or Ziffendale when we're eating meat, red meat. That's kind of my story. That's how I got started. And we uh, typically bounce around a lot on wines. We're not, I would say we're not focused on any particular um, vineyard or brand. And we like to try different wines, whether it's your grocery store bought wine, maybe around the 10 to $15 or up to your 30 or $40 dollar. Bottle. Depends on the occasion. Yeah, depends on the occasion. So that's it. Okay, well, thank you. I think that your our stories align, obviously, because we've spent the better half of our lives with our respective spouses. So that makes good sense that, that our stories are similar. But it's always good to hear the other side of the story and to hear what, what, what rounds you out. Thank you for sharing your stories. Let's go ahead and taste this red wine and let everybody kind of describe what Mm -hmm. what you taste what you see and a personal favorite of mine is is zinfandel that's that's a go-to for me so i am i'm appreciating it already it does have a little bit of a sweet note it does on on the aroma and tobacco Mm -hmm. smelling Mm -hmm. very much so and the color is very deep red almost a ruby i guess we would say very deep. The tobacco was the first thing that I got from it. Mm. It no, may be... And I would say it's dry, but not too dry. Mm. So so maybe a semi-dry. Semi-dry. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I like it. You know, I think this may be where I have the smell the um, vanilla. Mm. I do get vanilla out of it. Mm-hmm. Very nice selection. Yes. We typically like to pair a Zen with spicy bowl of chili or mm-hmm. something that's got a lot of flavor to it i like it with pizza yeah yeah <laughs> everything's good with pizza well and we like our pizza with some pepper and some banana pepper so yeah, yeah that's always good to throw in a zinfandel with it very good so our selection for our guys was actually sandy made them and there's a reason for it they but there's a theme with them sandy do you want to talk a little bit about that sure i was going through a wine store and I saw these two bottles there was like a little section and it was the bourbon barrel wine section and I noticed that there were multiple ones of these and I thought this seems to be a new trend Mm -hmm. I have really not seen very many wines that were aged in bourbon barrels so I thought you know what I bet Scott would really enjoy this he's become a bourbon drinker and he truly enjoys a nice single barrel bourbon and then I know um, John also enjoys bourbon so I thought you know what let's go ahead and get these and share them with our husbands and see what they think just because of that bourbon barrel so that's fun, and that is a thing that they're doing, and I think with beers too. It's kind of a they trend are. right now with with the bourbon barrels. So it, it, well, it will be fun. Well, there's to try there's it. there's a reason for that. Um, one of the reasons is economy, because so many people are starting to drink bourbons that they're having an excess of bourbon barrels, and you can oh, so, only so they're trying to re- you re- can only oh, use the bourbon now. barrels one time. Oh. So once it's aged, then they cannot use it anymore. So then they have, you can either use it for decoration in your vineyard or sell it for furniture or resell it to vineyards because as you know they use oak and they use they can usually so use they American their own oak. so they created that's their own demand smart. yes so it is they're not so, be that, so that's it. part of it that's an excellent little piece of there, knowledge there's a similar uh, thing going on with beers as well that's I've seen and not necessarily bourbon but I've seen uh, IPAs aged in whiskey barrels mm-hmm. and vice versa I've seen whiskey aged in barrels that had previously had IPAs in it. Didn't so it was they kind just of do a, a Guinness, too, that was in a crossover? With the, one of the, the major beers did one. I, yeah, I feel like we it was that, a Guinness. It was, yeah, it's a it was special Guinness that they had that... that um, aged in, in, in with uh, Irish whiskey barrels. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. But that's, I didn't know about the whiskey barrel only being, and I'm guessing bourbon and whiskey could be somewhat interchangeable and it's only one time use and so that actually makes very good sense and they're not wasting it so i'll tell you about the selections that we have here um we actually are gonna we we have the whiskey sipping 
glasses we're going to use our whiskey sipping glasses with our whiskey wines, our bourbon wines. The first one we're going to try is the Exodus 2017. It's O'Neill Vintners and Distillers have made this. It's an Exodus. That's the name of it. It's a Kentucky bourbon barrel aged California red blend. The wine was fermented in American stainless steel and then aged for three months in Kentucky bourbon barrels. It's a blend of Zinfandel, Petit Verdot, and Cabernet Sauvignon. So I think I'll like the blend of wines. I am not, I'll, I'll confess, I am not a big bourbon drinker, so I'm, I'm not sure how much this is going to appeal to my palate, but hopefully it'll be good for me. You can definitely tell the sweetness is there. Thank you. And it does have a little bit of a bourbon smell to it. Do you smell it? Well, I don't know if it's these whiskey glasses, but I'm having trouble picking up any of the bouquet with it. Mm. I'm not having that. I bear, it's, it's a deeper red than the Zinfandel. It's almost like a purplish garnet. It's, it's really a deep, deep color. Now let me check the alcohol content on it. Mm -hmm. Generally, the bourbon, the um, bourbon barreled wines have a real high, like 15, 16, even oh. 17 high percentage. Oh. This and, is, this and this is, is the day we tried to four bottles. <laughs> Might should have. It's kind of jammy. That. Yeah, it is yeah. jammy, but I kind of like it. I think it is sweet. Mm -hmm. Like I'm said, a lot sweeter than the uh, Zinfandel. Oh, so that is higher. But I am picking up a sweet note, and I and I can. It's it's a hint of bourbon, but not so much that it's turning me off, which is a, a risk with me with bourbon because that is just not a flavor that I enjoy. So this was my turn to go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh my goodness, let me find out about this bourbon barrel wine. I found out that it was originally started back in 2014 mm. by a buffalo. What did not Buffalo? It was one thousand the thousand story. Oh yeah, oh yeah, with the buffalo on the on the with label. With the buffalo on the label, mm -hmm. okay. and it was a Ziffendale, and that's where it originally started. So they were the first vineyard to start using to start the, using it. And they started the trend. They, then. they, were they the started trendsetter. the trend, and there is a big hoopla going on. Is this true wine? Some controversy. There is controversy. There's always controversy here on Wines to Buy. And, no. <laughs> and since we're not true wine experts, we're just wine hobbyists. I thought. Uh oh! I Are we, we stepping in it? <laughs> exactly. So I thought, okay, we've got to think about what we're going to say here. We we enjoy it. We fell for the marketing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always going to try a good trend to see what's going on, and that's and it is even marketed like a it, like it's in the the uh, bottle is like a bourbon bottle. Very you much notice so, the yeah. shape. Mm -hmm. Ex it's skinnier and it's got um and it's clear glass it's clear glass it's it's actually quite stylish i do like the bottle so if you're one that goes into the store and picks just on the bottle this would definitely appeal to very you very thick glass bottom mm -hmm. even the uh seal looked like a uh, bourbon, bourbon seal, seal. Bourbon seal. seal. Mm -hmm. yep. it did they were saying that they didn't know if how this came about did it come about because so many people enjoy those big zins those big cabernets with the oak the really heavy oak, the heavy alcohol. I mean, it's a good, it makes sense. So it's, it does. So it kind of goes along with what, what the trend was going towards. So they just decided to up it mm -hmm. a notch. That makes sense. So, and bourbon is a bit in the, in the cocktail industry. In the co bourbon is it, like Manhattans and they're all over the place. And again, that's a, a hindrance for me because I don't get into it. But it's all over the place right now. There's even a restaurant in town called Bourbon. We like it. <laughs> this is actually, I, I'm enjoying this wine. And it's very smooth, easy to drink. Mm -hmm. So they're wondering, is it from people that, that are transitioning into that heavier wine? Or is it people that are set, starting to drink it because it's more manly? Because it's the bourbon It's the in manly it. wine. <laughs> so there was that controversy. There was a good article that we'll put in the show notes about this too. Well, and I think that it, the millennials are, because the bourbon craze kind of hit with their coming of age with the wine, or not the wine, the, the liquor, that's been a, a trend. The bourbon trend has been maybe five or six years since they really started hitting that. So that could be a chicken egg thing. Maybe the, the millennials really like the bourbon and the there, wine yeah, industry there's is not enough trying into, to capitalize. I actually was thinking those same questions because, of course, I had to listen to a podcast about oh, it, too. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> and while I was cleaning, I had my earbuds in so that I could hear what was going on. And they don't know which came first, 
chicken or egg. So. They, they really don't. But I think it's, I, I, I like that it's recycling. That actually appeals to me more. It's not, it, it makes good sense why they're doing it. And it, 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 it in the industry, it, it, it's a good supporting one another too. I like that. Well, it's good marketing overall oh, too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cross appeal. But your pure wine drinker is going to say, this will end up masking flaws because it's so heavy on the wood. So there, that's. But if you like an oaky wine, if you, you know, like it, but but for, I'm just telling you what I what I heard. They're saying that this can help mask flaws in the winemaking process. Another bonus if you're. <laughs> I, I I get it, but I. But if you like it, you like it. If you like you it, drink you like it. it. That's right. Yeah. Is there a problem with masking flaws? Not if it helps you sell wine. If you're the maker. No. So. Yeah. If it makes it taste better. It, but if you're a true traditionalist and you're purist. about purist, yeah. then I can see, I can see where. That. Mm-hmm. And then that's what they say, too, about the natural wines that are coming out. So it's from one end of the spectrum to the other. Well, so from the natural and then all the way the to trendy the, stuff. the trendy Nobody's, stuff. And, and the traditionalists are never going to jump on a trend bandwagon. They're just not. Well, we did. We tried it. That's right. And we like it. So we're pouring number wine number four, the Cooper and Thief. It's a 2017. It's another bourbon-aged wine. The notes on it are, is Cooper and Thief Red Blend is a dark and jammy red wine blend loaded with bourbon-inspired flavors and aromas. Crafted by cellar master Jeff Casavan, our wine is aged for three months in bourbon barrels, which gives way to soft, velvety tannins with a subtle heat. The combined result is a rich flavor with a long, lingering finish. So that was the note from the winemaker. And the previous one was aged for three months as well, correct? I wonder if that's. I do. I think that's usually the standard. But this one, just in comparison to that one, and I thought that one was a dark ruby. This is this is like purple. This is beautiful. This one is a beautiful color. A sixteen (gasps) percent. Oh my goodness! Fifteen nine was the other. Fifteen nine, sixteen. I don't know if my nose is opening up, but But I can I can definitely smell. Oh, that's much more. Oh, I can smell. I can smell the barrel. I can smell the oak on this one and the smoke. It's smoky. Yeah, you can definitely smell the oak mm-hmm. in this one. Charred oak. It, it, yeah, I would say charred oak is a very good descriptor. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So smooth. Ooh, wow. Vanilla. It's sweet, too. Oh. Ooh. It's very sweet. I don't mm. think I'd want this with food. No. I'm, this I'm definitely is getting a, like vanilla and tobacco mm-hmm. in this. And it's like a campfire, sitting around the campfire it flavor. It is. It really, you can taste that element. Almost caramel. Mm-hmm. I like this. Mm. Do you mm-hmm. taste caramel, Scott? Yeah, I think so. Oh, and it's, oh, look at the leg on it. I would definitely say this is almost an after-dinner dessert type. And it's not designated as a dessert wine, but I would not. I think you could have it as a dessert. It, it's almost that rich. It yeah. is. It's very rich. It is not dry at all. Mm-mm. No. no it, not at all. It's very sweet. Mm. But not in a negative way. Sometimes no, you taste no, sweet and it turns negative. you off. Well, it I might, think it, It's not white wine sweet to me so, <laughs> no. still well, it's still red wine i would drink but mm. not not during a meal like sandy said there's a difference between yeah. being sweet and being rich and right. this seems rich thick yeah. full-bodied yeah. in the mouth hmm. slightly concerned about and for me i don't know if i have a slight oak allergy or Sometimes oh. if I have a real oaky one the next day, that's where my, my sinus is really inflamed. So I'm wondering about the consequences of this one. And, and you me. prefer the unoaked Chardonnays. Uh, the really oaky ones tend to, to kick back on me. So yeah. I'm concerned about this, but it tastes so good that I'm willing to take the risk. When it comes to wine, we all are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I like this. So we did good? Yes. Yes. We you picked good great. choices for y'all? Sandy did. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy did a great job. <laughs> that's, that was a good purchase. That was a good. Well, thought. I saw since since I saw so many bourbon wine aged barreled things, I was like, I can't just pick one. Mm-hmm. I had to pick a couple because I wanted to see the compare. difference. I wanted to compare. And in comparison, we'll go through and rate each of the wines as we always do. But I'm interested to see, like I might have to taste them both again to really be able to compare which one I like best. But I, I think we I already need have more glasses. I, there's so many glasses. On this I'm table. curious how these would bottle age because what I'm thinking is probably 10 years from now, you probably won't be able to find these being a trend. Who knows? Maybe well, you will. Unless somebody I don't know. keeps it. 
I think Not I this- read where there was already the t- um, 2015 that was a bourbon barrel, the thousand story you can't find now. Mm. It's because it was so popular. I can, mm-hmm. is, but does that mean that it's completely gone or somebody's got it sitting in a cellar the, somebody somewhere? Somebody's sitting, sitting in a cellar somewhere, mm-hmm. I think. I just don't think you buy well, retail. Oh, that makes sense. And what's the typical amount of time that like a cab would spend in an oak barrel? I don't know that. You stumped us, man. I'm not a sommelier. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I read in the article. I imagine it's probably longer than three months, so. I don't know. I think three months is supposed to be very short. Yeah, um, yeah. For some reason, whenever I think whenever we've been to those um, things, they just we finish it. To the, like nine months to, to vineyard, a year, maybe. So, and, it, and it probably varies according to how, what, however, that winemaker wants I think to that's age what we've it. Seen is sometimes it's in the vat, and then they take it from the vat, from the vat into from the, yeah, the barrels, right. and then barrels can be a shorter or longer term depending depending on, on how much you want. So, so right. the short term in the barrels could explain why these are both jammy. Could yeah. I bet. Could you imagine if it sat there any longer? How oh much it gosh. would soak up? It would be way too oaky. I think. I mean, well, I don't know. A, I don't too, oki, it would be the, bourbon. The, the boozy. Right, too boozy. Too boozy. That was the word I was looking for. Because this one is boozy. All right. So, guys, while we're sitting and sipping and enjoying these wines, we're gonna tell you, Sandy and I, the the rating scale that we came up with. Um, so here, and then we'll ask you guys to go along with us and rate each of the wines that we've tried today as we do on each episode. So our scale is one cork, pour it out. Two corks are finish it, but look for something else. Three corks, it's okay, maybe another glass, maybe I'd buy it, but I'm not really married to it. Four corks are I would buy a bottle, I would make note to go and find it. It's a wine to find for sure. And five corks are, this is so awesome, I really want to buy a lot more, like a case. So keeping that in mind, we'd ask you guys to go through and rate the wines that we've tried today. Who wants to go first? All right, first one. The, um, the champagne that's really not a champagne. Well, it's a sparkling wine, and it predates champagne. And it's, fr- it's the St. Hilaire 2017 Blanquette de Limon. And I just think that's fun to say. I would give it... A four. I would definitely want to buy it again. I enjoyed it very much. And thank you very much for making a selection of it, John. I'd give it a four also. I'd definitely buy it again. And the price was right, too. What was the price? Twelve ninety nine on special. Oh, that was good. I think the normal price was fifteen ninety nine. No, I think 14, thirteen I, in online research, thirteen ninety nine is about right for it. Okay. But I think for the price it's very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scott, what would you give it? Um and as I said in my wine story, I tend to lead, lean more towards a red wine. So in this case, it would be a two for me. <gasps> but that, but that, but yeah, that, that's how I but am that's with Pinot's, but that's, that's the way I, you know. That's the way you roll. I, I enjoy the red wines, and I'm not a sparkling or white wine drinker. And just to, just to make sure everybody knows, a lot of wine is subjective i mean what is good for me is not necessarily what sandy likes what michelle likes what john likes mm-hmm. or on the day mm-hmm. yeah. yeah right and that's the point of this is and we want and, and we want there to be varying tastes if it was it wouldn't be true if we all just said four 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 so that's good to know yeah. but i am going to challenge you i'm going to find a white wine that you like that's going to be my new goal is to find a white wine that scott will be like hey maybe i do like white wine i just didn't taste the right one for me uh-oh. yeah uh-oh. challenge Let's made do it, Let's do it. <laughs> well you, you said previously that you thought that you could find a wine for everybody i do and you're taking that a step further to find a white wine for scott absolutely that is. Yeah. that's yeah Woo. I, i'm, I'm going to do it okay mm-hmm. So you're going to have to come back on, Scott. Yeah, that's a pretty big challenge. <laughs> <laughs> For this bourbon drinker. I know. Well, maybe I can find a bourbon-aged white, and that'll get me halfway there. <laughs> and I think I'll give it a three. Okay. The reason for my three is because... It was very fruit forward. And whenever I drink a sparkling wine, I like it to be very light, fun. I don't, I just think fun whenever Mm -hmm. I think of sparkling wine. And to me, this was, this was a little bit, like I said, heavy on the fruit. It wasn't fun enough. It wasn't fun enough. (laughs) Okay. 
That's fair. And so you get that that preference because we like sparkling wine, and so it just it, it probably gets a, an assist from our taste versus gets the what do you call it? the handicap for your taste, and that that's that's the side yeah. of the table right there. <laughs> the line's been drawn. It has been. <laughs> um, so wine number two is the Francis Ford Coppola Director's Cut, 2015 Zinfandel. Uh, John, you want to go first? I'd give that a four. We've had it before. Uh, I'd buy it again. I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Personal favorite is we do like the Coppolas, and it being a Zinfandel again that that gets that at least a point assist for us because we do like those. Solid four for me, definitely. And I would also rate it a four. So um, enjoyed it. I would buy it over and over, but I don't know if I would buy a case of it to to stock up. You don't want to commit to that much, no. yeah. yeah. I'm going to see your four and raise you to four and a half. Oh, oh there she goes. With She's her embracing our abs. <laughs> four and a half corks because I think think that if this since this was a 2015 if you go and you buy a 2016 then keep it for a year then i might really like that hmm. we so, could play around with the vintage yeah. exactly yeah. that yeah. exactly what i was thinking mm-hmm. okay so wine number three was the exodus 2017 and this one is it was 22 dollars uh, it was purchased at a discount because of the 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 quantity discount that you get and this one was actually purchased at world market and it came in at a full price at twenty two dollars seventeen nineteen with a discount what do we think did you need to try it again i'm good i'd, I'd give that one a three and a half i enjoyed it but since we did two of the bourbon mm-hmm. ones together I, I think i preferred the other one the the other one better Michelle, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with John on that one. I I think it's at a disadvantage because we tried two together. Um, or is it at an advantage for us to know what we really liked? Good point. Yeah, yeah, fair. And that's why you taste more than one so that you get that. So it was a good thing to get two at a time. The um, to, I'm gonna stick just with the Exodus and speak about that one because I'll speak about the next one. So I'm gonna say definitely a three, maybe even a two and a half because I don't know that I would given that I don't like bourbon, that I would ever even pursue it again without having it like really wow me. So I'm going to go two and a half on this one. So the Exodus for me, I think I would probably rate, I think I would probably rate the Exodus a four. Oh. And the only reason is I would probably buy it again to to have it with dinner, mm-hmm. but it is a little contrast to the other which we'll rate in a minute, but for two different occasions. Okay, very good. See, I would give it a two because I don't see myself buying it again. I'm kind of with you, yeah. And I was giving it the generous because it is, it, it surprised me because I was expecting to not to like it and I kind of did. So that's why I got that half point. But and I it's wouldn't. not that I didn't like it. I enjoyed it, but I don't see myself buying it again. And that's yeah. why I gave it a two. Yeah. I would 100% agree. All right, so our last wine was the Cooper and Thief 2017. Again, full price at World Market was $27. Sandy got it at a discount because she bought a lot of wine at the time, Nineteen ninety nine. John, what do you think? I'd give that one a, I'd give it a four. I'd buy it again. For sure. Yeah. No no hesitation. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not something that will be my first bottle to pull out and say, hey, let's drink this. But like you said, for a dessert w- uh, wine mm-hmm. on occasion, I, th- occasion I, think, I think it would be an interesting interesting option to have. And I'm going to go three because, again, I might would, would at some point want to have an, an additional glass. But it, it is super oaky. I'm a little worried about how it's going to hit me later. And so I would not go out and pursue it. So that's a three-quarter for me. And... And I would rate it probably uh, three and a half again, as John said, probably something after dinner, um, not to go with your meal. Um, so I think it fits that scenario pretty well. 
I, I agree with the three and a half on this one because I would like it an after dinner. I can see myself sitting out on the back porch by the fire, mm-hmm. having a glass of this. Mm-hmm. That would be very enjoyable. It would go really well on a fall night. I it can would. See a nice fog. You're enjoying the fact that it's just crisp and cool, and this would be a good one to break out. And it have would. On that's that that's how pool. that's how I foresee this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I think it would pair well with a bowl full of vanilla ice cream. Mm. Mm, I just kind of think it would. You're right. Think, yeah. <laughs> and apple pie. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So that's our rating of our four wines. And we're super glad to have had our husbands join us. And before we wrap up this episode, I think we're going to talk about our crushes. And John and Scott, what we, Sandy and I do is each week we talk about a crush, something that has our attention, something that we're thinking about, something that uh, we're excited about this week. So Sandy, what are you thinking about this week? Well, since we are so into podcasts right now, super into podcasts, I am really crushing on my earbuds. And it happened to be a gift from my husband just because he told me, you really want, I was having to, had those earbuds that have the wires and mm-hmm. they kept falling out and they kept irritating me. And I was like, oh, I really want the earbuds. The AirPods. The AirPods. Okay. The yeah. AirPods. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, just go get them. I said, but it's not my birthday. It's not Christmas. He goes, just go get them. So I said, John, please take note. <laughs> So. There is a birthday coming up in your future for your wife. <laughs> so since then, I guess I got them maybe a month or so ago, but today I really noticed as I was cleaning the bathtub, they did not fall out of my ears while I was listening you to my podcast. You were yanking on the cords. And I those, wasn't yanking yeah. on the cords, exactly. So I've been crushing on those. Okay, I can, I can totally see that. I would love to have a pair of those to crush on. FYI, husband. So what um, are you crushing on? I am crushing on actually our little podcast studio because I think we've done a pretty good job of making it, you know. You have. It's warm. It's inviting. We're going to throw some pictures up eventually for you guys to see. But it, it it definitely takes you into the wine tasting mode, I think. And it's intimate, which is what a wine setting should be. A wine tasting setting should be. So I'm kind of crushing on a good job us for setting up such a good studio. Yeah. And John, nice. thank you very much because you've actually helped us a lot with getting this all set up and being our sound engineer. So thank you, hubby. For... So I'm crushing on John and the wine studio. Is that fair? <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> it is Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that may wrap it up. Thank you guys for joining us and thank you for your input. I think you added a, a fun element to it. Well, thanks for having us. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us on On Wines to Find. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Wines to Find. For today's show notes, visit us at www.pickagreatwine.com. Follow us on social media for bonus and live content. Instagram at Wines to Find Podcast, Facebook at Wines to Find, and Twitter at Wines to Find. And don't forget to join us next time on Wines to Find. Mm -hmm.